Hello everybody and welcome back to another video. Now in today's video we're going to be doing another experiment, something that I believe actually was uh, suggested to me by one of you guys out there in a comment on one of my previous videos. And uh, what we're going to be doing today is trying to install the very first version of Microsoft Internet Explorer version 1.0 inside of Windows 10. Yes, we're running basically, again, super old software inside of the latest and greatest Microsoft operating system, Windows 10. Uh, we did this with Microsoft Office 3.0 a while ago on this channel. It was like a week or two ago. Let's go ahead and just jump into it. So this piece of software that we're about to install was released in 1995. This was the very first release of Internet Explorer which was Microsoft's first web browser. This was actually bundled with Microsoft Plus for Windows 95, which was kind of an add-on and uh, enhancement pack that was created to kind of be sold alongside Windows 95. And it's also where 3D Pinball Space Cadet um, got its start as well. And hey, speaking of, did you know that 3D Pinball Space Cadet's origins can be traced all the way back to id Software's Doom? Yeah, it's kind of a crazy story. Go ahead and check out this video up in the cards if you want to hear more about that. But but that's enough plugging for now. Um, but yes, this uh, got its start in the Microsoft Plus for Windows 95 pack. And uh, it eventually became the most popular web browser in the early 2000s and, you know, obviously the late 1990s as well. This is kind of what sparked the browser wars, this holy war is between Microsoft and uh, Netscape. And it's uh, part of the reason why the U.S. Department of Justice actually looked into Microsoft uh, as a monopoly um, because they had so much of a, of a hold on the browser market because they bundled uh, or, you know, later on. Uh, they did bundle Internet Explorer with Windows, but it wasn't that way originally. You had to actually go out and buy this software, um, you know, as a part of the Microsoft Plus pack. But, um, so I have the installation file right here, and just to show you guys, this was uh, last modified on, um, we'll go ahead and, I believe it's under details here. You can see that the copyright date is in 1995, Microsoft Corporation. So there you go. Um, we're going to go ahead and try to run this. I'm pretty certain this is not going to work, and oh, it actually might. I'm not running any compatibility mode filters on this at all. This is just running the executable natively in Windows, and it looks like it's actually going to work. Yes. And it says Internet Explorer version 1.0 requires Windows 95. Uh, yeah, that is that is wonderful. So it thinks that we're running a older version of Windows. Um, we're going to actually apply some compatibility settings, which you know, and just say that we're running this under Windows 95. Basically, that's actually kind of funny. So it, it thinks that we're running like a like an unsupported version of Windows, which we technically might be, because this is such an old uh, program. But uh, let's just hit OK here and try this again. And we're going to go say yes again. And oh, here we go. So check this out. Internet Explorer version 1.0 license agreement. And man, so you can scroll through this and read it if you want to. We're going to just say that we have read it. Um, and oh, I spoke too soon. So we, of course, get an error message. There was a problem starting default install. The specified module could not be found. Uh, installation failed. So that is unfortunate. All right, so we're back. And yes, if you guys probably saw from that last clip, we did get a error message when we actually tried to run this MSIE10 um, application right here. And I wasn't really able to find a way to get around that, but we do have a couple of backup plans here. Um, I have downloaded, and I'll actually put this link down below from WinWorld PC. They actually host um, a couple different versions of Internet Explorer. And I got version a another copy of version 1.0 here, as well as version 1.5. So we're going to try out this version 1.0. It came on an IMG file, and uh, this is what you know what came with it here. And you can see we got three files here: one executable, one cabinet file, and one um, INI file. So we're going to run this INFINST file, which I'm not. I assume it's like the installer. Um, it doesn't actually, like, this This actually is not signed by Microsoft, so that's interesting. But we'll go and just run it anyway. And, okay, so it's going to say that, 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 like, same problem. It says Internet Explorer version 1.0 requires Windows 95. But we can fix that by uh, putting a compatibility filter on this and changing it to Windows 95. And uh, let's see if we can... Now, I wonder if this is the same exact application, which it could be, and it looks like it's going to come with that same license agreement. Um, and it's going to give the same error, so we're trying to find default install. There's also this cabinet file here, where which when we go into that, it actually has files in here, some DLLs and 
Um, yeah, there is also a I Explore executable, and oh, so we have to actually extract everything. So let's just extract it to the desktop here, and we'll make a new folder and call it IE1, and extract it. I guess it's going to uh, e extract everything from the. Uh, oh yeah, here it is. So what we can probably do is because it's probably not going to want to work with yeah so because it's it's obviously going to need some of these files in here so we can just extract all of this stuff and uh paste it in this folder here and we will not copy i explore so we're, we're basically moving all of this stuff out of this uh cab file here and we've put it in this folder so we're basically bypassing the installer and let's see if we can run i explore so it's going to give us another error it says entry point not found the procedure entry point uh reinitialize a critical section could not be located in the dynamic link library so it was pointed to url.dll which we have here um, that could be just a compatibility problem let's see if we can change this to uh, Windows 95 we'll run this program as an as a administrator and you see this one is actually signed by Microsoft so but let's try to run it now with that compatibility layer applied and you can see it actually does the exact same thing so I went ahead and turned on or turned off um, hiding file extensions because it was just getting very annoying to me uh, and now we can actually see because there are I can see there's that dialmon exe I'm gonna see uh, how many EXEs we have in here. So we've got inetwiz, dialmon, um, PN front, and PN client. We're going to try to execute these other programs and, and see if they work. Um, so inetwiz is giving a entry point not found error again. Dialmon uh, looks like it's is actually... Oh, and here's, you know, the Windows Troubleshooter coming up, uh, which we've already applied the compatibility filter to iExplorer. We can try it on this one here and see if this uh, and see if this does anything so no it's gonna give us the same error uh, dialmon looked like it executed but it didn't do anything it's not running in the background so I'm not sure really what this program this looks like a dialing like a, a a tool you would use to actually you know connect over dial-up that's what I'm thinking because you know there's that phone there and it's got like a uh, line pointing out to the globe which represents the internet so we have these two other files and they're just going to say this app can't run on your PC so this may actually be a 16-bit program um, yeah so this the, these literally could be 16-bit programs because that's usually what happens when you try to run a 16-bit program on uh, Windows 10 64-bit uh, we might try these later on you know actually running them with OTVDM but I want to move on for right now to Internet Explorer 1.5 uh, and see if this one will work and from what I can tell from the date modified dates here these files look to be um, about six months or six months or so newer than um, the files here you know these were modified in August of 1995 these were in January of 96 uh, some of them February of 96 and it's actually giving us an elevation error saying that the requested operation requires elevation so we can fix that by uh, while we're in here yeah so we, we already have it running in compatibility mode we'll run this program as an administrator and now it should oh check that out it's actually working um, Oh, and it is giving us an unsupported 16-bit application error. The program, um, whatever ACM setup.exe is, cannot start because it's incompatible with the 64-bit versions of Windows. And now it's saying there's insufficient memory to, to run setup. We know that isn't the case, so there's obviously uh, something else wrong there. So whatever ACM setup is, can we try to just run ACM setup? So this is the 16-bit program. So... Not to fear, because OTVDM is here, at least it should be. I thought I had this... Okay, yeah, here it is. So I, I guess I just must have uh, deleted it from the desktop. Um, so we can go ahead and extract OTVDM here, and we will run this. And, okay, Windows Smart Screen is going to come up and complain. We'll just run it anyway. We'll go into this file, and or, or this folder, and run acmsetup.exe. And okay, so a couple things happened. The setup actually loaded this time with that nice blue to uh, black gradient background, but it is giving us another error message saying that setup is unable to open the data file. Please run setup from where you originally ran it. 
which is odd because it's running from where it was originally from like all the files that regularly come with it are there i mean as far as i can tell now it's giving now it's just saying processing top level information failed <laughs> was not completed success it doesn't even say setup it says setup in like the title bar here but it just says was not completed successfully that's kind of funny yeah so for whatever reason we can't get this file to work but we can try to just launch iExplore itself and oh my gosh that's actually working are you kidding me the program is actually working so yeah i guess this is now that i'm kind of looking at this i guess this is a proper install of the entire program just extracted but it was weird that there was like a setup file in here so i was thinking that we had to run that but yeah literally all the files are in here so we can just run iExplore itself and it actually works um this computer is actually not connected to the internet. Let me go ahead and fix that right now. Okay, so we are connected to the internet now, and let's see if we can... Uh, well, first of all, let's go to help and about here. So it's, it actually says uh, Microsoft Internet Explorer version 1.5, Windows NT version 6.2. And yeah, this actually appears to be pulling some information like right from the system. It's actually pulling the NT version string as opposed to just saying Windows 10. It's pulling the NT version, which is 6.2. And it's also showing the uh, username, which is in this case just VM. But it actually says this product is licensed to and it's pulling um, the username from the systems so that's actually pretty cool um but here you go guys this is internet explorer version 1.5 this is how simple that it looked back in the day um let's go ahead and try to go to a website here i don't think we can just type google.com oh my gosh you guys what the so yeah i was thinking that you would have to type in http but it actually just populates that for you when you type in google.com and oh my gosh guys look at this web page like are you kidding me so for some reason the background is blue don't know why that is but you see that all that there's all this stuff up here um and yeah well the the entire page is like broken i mean that's kind of obvious it looks like it was actually trying to load the old version of the site that actually just had like the direct uh shortcuts right on the top menu bar or if you want to call it that and uh the image is displaying correctly so that is nice there's also all this text here that you can't really see um <laughs> it's like completely messed up that is hilarious Let's actually try to perform a search here. Like, let's try to search for uh, Michael MJD here and hit Google search. And oh my gosh, it's actually working. It's actually loading the Google search page. That's really cool. The search results page actually loaded for the most part completely. I mean, all the results are here. Um, the like page, like all the different pages are like showing up correctly. Uh, the copyright, like the footer is uh is there now youtube is going to be like the major test let's see if we can actually load like my youtube channel on here which looks like it's actually just going to come up with an error saying this program does not support the protocol for accessing youtube.com which is interesting oh it might be because it's https that could be this could not support https which actually might be the case so let's try to uh, load. I, th I think YouTube forces HTTPS anyway, so... Well, that's interesting. <laughs> you type YouTube.com, it loads, it comes up with Google. That's very strange. Uh, don't, don't really know why that's happening. Let me try that again. YouTube.com. It literally loads up with the Google homepage. Can we go to, like, Yahoo? Okay, well, apparently Yahoo.com is an invalid request for whatever reason. Uh, let's go to teammjd.com. That's another invalid r request. Um, how about uh, osforms.net, uh, if I can type it correctly here. So yeah, that's also an invalid request. I don't know why YouTube is going to Google. That's the weirdest thing ever. Let's see here. How about the how about the Wayback Machine web.archive.org? Okay, what the. Oh, I thought it was trying to load YouTube.com, like it's, like it changed to YouTube.com, but I, I, I saw down here like it's loading web.archive.org. So I think the reason why it wasn't, okay, so this actually just says that the uh, attempt to load the website failed. I think that the reason why it wasn't able to load all those websites is because they force HTTPS. Like I have on, on my, both my form site and teammgd.com. Um, both actually will force HTTPS. So if you try to go to them using the HTTP protocol, it will automatically, um, you know, change it to HTTPS. And I just did that, you know, for extra security. Um, 
but so that's why it's probably not able to load all those websites still don't know what's going on with youtube.com there but just for fun here let me actually pull up I'm gonna to go to the Internet Archive on my main computer here. Well, apparently the Internet Archive is like actually down because I am not able to navigate to it. It just says this site uh, cannot be reached because it refused to connect. But like I can still, you know, like go to my you know form site and everything, which is obviously hosted on like a separate server. So um, yeah, the Internet Archive looks to be like it's actually down, which kind of sucks. So that is unfortunate because I was going to, to try to like go to the um, Internet Archive Wayback Machine and, and pull up like an old web page like from this time period and and see if you know we could actually go to it but at least we can go to Google I mean we can we can browse Google um, I mean I can like search for you know myself apparently this one is whoa what the heck just happened now that now the whole site's broken I don't know what just happened um, how about the mobile website let's go to m.youtube.com and that tries to go to Google again what the crap is going on like I don't understand. I guess because like Google and YouTube might be hosted on the same server and it's just trying to pull up like, I don't know, that that that, that literally makes no sense to me. I have no idea why when you type YouTube.com it goes to Google. Um, I'm guessing it has something to do with them being hosted on the same server, but I still don't think that, like that doesn't normally happen. When you go to YouTube, you don't get the Google homepage. Um, but I mean, yeah, we can go into things like page setup. You know, you can say this actually looks like something you would see in like Microsoft Word. Um, but all of your buttons up here, like we can increase the text size, we can set a home page if we want to. The home page is Microsoft.com, which doesn't even want to load properly. Um, and we have like the old Windows logo over here. That is definitely pretty cool. Um, but honestly, guys, there you have it. I mean, that is a, a very um, interesting test here on trying to run Internet Explorer. Yeah, version 1.0 we couldn't get to work, but version 1.5 we got that to work and it actually works better than I thought it was going to. I thought it wasn't going to load like any web page, but it's actually loading like the Google home page and the search page. Um, albeit it is completely broken, but you can still actually read everything. I mean, just to show you again, like you can read everything on this page and it displays somewhat correctly, you know, when it wants to. For some reason that one time it just didn't want to work. Now, obviously I wouldn't really recommend actually using this super old version of Internet Explorer as your primary web browser because well it's just a super old version of it and because of that it's just not as secure as using a more modern web browser like Chrome or Firefox or dare I even say Internet Explorer like the latest version of that whatever that is um, or Microsoft Edge we'll go ahead and kind of throw that in as well but hey do you know what else isn't secure and not really recommended either using the same password on multiple websites. And hey, if you do that, and if you're thinking about improving your online security, you might wanna check out this video's sponsor, Dashlane. Dashlane is the secure password manager and digital wallet designed to make your online life easier. Have you ever tried to log into a website and just couldn't remember what your password was? Maybe it's one of those sites that you don't use very often, so you have to go through the password recovery process, or maybe you just try a few of your most used passwords and end up getting locked out of your account temporarily. Yeah, it's happened to all of us. Managing passwords on all of your online accounts can be a huge hassle, but this is where Dashlane comes in. Instead of coming up with unique passwords yourself, Dashlane can do it for you. It keeps all of your passwords stored in a secure vault that only you have access to with a single master password. It can also generate secure passwords for you right from your web browser and autofill in form data like addresses and credit card numbers. This allows you to breeze through signup forms and log into all of your accounts with just one click. You can download Dashlane for free on Windows, macOS, Linux, Android, or iOS. So if you're interested in trying out Dashlane for completely free on your first device, follow the link in this video's description to get started today. Yeah, guys, that is going to go ahead and wrap it up uh, for today's video. If you guys enjoyed this one, uh, definitely be sure to give it a thumbs up. Um, be sure to uh, get subscribed down below and turn on those channel notifications if you haven't already to get notified whenever that I upload a new video, which I do every single week on this channel. And um, also, guys, if you have any video you know, suggestions or you know anything that you guys want to ask me down in the comments, um, be sure to do that as I always enjoy reading what you guys have to say. And as always, guys, I just want to thank Thank you all so much for watching and I will see you in the next video.